Whoopi Goldberg was just suspended from The View after she made some controversial comments about the treatment of Jewish people during the Second World War. This has caused fans to look into her past, and it's clear this was not the first time we were warned about Whoopi Goldberg. First up, Meghan McCain. Following Whoopi's controversial comments on the Holocaust, her former co-host on The View, Meghan McCain, decided to share her disappointment with the comments. For a refresher, the women were talking about the book Mouse and how it was banned in school in Tennessee. The book talks about the Second World War and what it was like to be Jewish during that terrifying time. Amid the debate about the book, Whoopi decided to share her opinion and argued that the quote, Holocaust wasn't about race, saying quote, if you're going to do this, now let's be truthful about it because the Holocaust wasn't about race. No, it's not about race. Joy Behar then clapped back, saying that the German leaders discriminated against the Jews because they felt they were a different race. Goldberg countered that it was not about race, rather, quote, about man's inhumanity to man. Anna Navarro then chimed in, saying it was about white supremacy and going after Jews and gypsies. Though Goldberg doubled down and stated that, quote, these are two white groups of people, which in her mind meant it was not about race. Following the episode, viewers were outraged at Whippy's comments and called them dangerous and ignorant because she is completely wrong. Goldberg apologized on the episode the following day and read a statement from a member of the Anti-Defamation League, which stated that attacks on the Jewish people only happened because the Germans deemed them to be an inferior race. McCain decided to share her thoughts on Twitter as the scandal was unfolding, and she condemned Goldberg's remarks. She wrote, quote, I hate commenting on my old employer because I have moved on in every way a person can move on. That being said, I am an activist against anti-Semitism and it's a big part of my life. The growing threat is real and everywhere. I'm heartbroken about what was said. McCain called the comments bizarre, incoherent, and even dangerous in a column she later wrote for the Daily Mail. Adding, quote, I'm not calling for Whoopi Goldberg to be fired, if only because I don't believe there is any universe where she could possibly do anything that could get her fired. She's the crown jewel of The View and a pop culture icon, and continued that she wanted the show to instead use this as a teaching moment to explain to viewers why she was wrong. McCain also wrote, quote, instead of half assed apologies and bringing in experts in the anti Semitism space, maybe dedicate an entire Hot Topic segment to discussing why what was said was so deeply offensive and dangerous. Instead of listening to McCain's idea, the network instead decided to suspend Whoopi for two weeks, which many felt is not a punishment and actually just a cop out that will take attention off the situation. Next up, Bella Thorne. Whoopi Goldberg got in a feud with Bella Thorne of all people because the women of The View decided to talk about Bella Thorne leaking her own intimate photos after hackers threatened to do it without her consent in 2019. Intimate photos of celebrities leaked to the public is becoming a more common occurrence with hackers able to hack into cell phones easier than ever. But Bella decided to do things differently and took control of the narrative instead of letting the hackers control her. Whoopi not only had a problem with Thorne's decision to publish the photos, she thought they should have never been taken in the first place, saying, quote, if you're famous, I don't care how old you are, you don't take pictures of yourself. Many felt this mindset blamed Bella for her decision rather than blaming the hackers for invading her privacy. Bella responded back on Twitter, writing, quote, Dear Whoopi, I have loved you for so long, but honestly, I'm so displeased and saddened by your response to my leak. Blaming girls for taking the photo in the first place is sick and honestly disgusting. Adding, quote, Your view on this matter is honestly awful, and I hope you change your mindset as you are a show talking to young girls. George Bush. One of the worst moments in Whoopi's career happened after she made an offensive joke about former President Bush that got her blacklisted from the industry. At the Carrie fundraiser at Radio City Music Hall, Whoopi said a joke relating the president's last name to a woman's pubic hair, saying, quote, We should keep Bush where he belongs. Whoopi said this while gesturing to her crotch. Quote, and not in the White House. The backlash started almost immediately, and SlimFast removed her from its ad campaign in the days after. A statement from the company said, quote, We are disappointed by the manner in which Ms. Goldberg chose to express herself and sincerely regret her recent remarks offended some of our consumers. Whoopi responded to SlimFast in her own statement, saying, quote, While I can appreciate what the SlimFast people need to do in order to protect their business, I must also do what I need to do as an artist, as a writer, and as an American, not to mention as a comic. The Democratic National Convention also uninvited Whoopi from its 2004 events. Meanwhile, her acting job stopped coming for several years. Whoopi claimed in an interview that the joke greatly affected her career and she was blacklisted for years after the scandal. She recently described this period to the New York Times Magazine. Quote, For a good three years, I couldn't even get arrested. 
Her acting credits during these years are the smallest in her career. Bill Cosby Goldberg got a ton of heat after she decided to defend Bill Cosby when the first allegations came out against him. On a 2014 episode of The View, when actress Barbara Bowman spoke about her claims, Whoopi responded, quote, Quite honestly, having been on both sides of this, where people allege that you do something, it doesn't matter now, people have something in their head. I have a lot of questions for the lady, maybe she'll come forward. She also said the allegations would be more believable if the women would have come forward earlier and not waited so long continuing that she is not going to make a judgment until she has all the facts. Many women did not like this, as it goes against the believe all women mantra that most women abide by in these situations. Then after lots of pushback, she later changed her opinion in 2015, saying she could no longer believe that Cosby was innocent until proven guilty. Adding quote, if this is to be tried in the court of public opinion, I gotta say all of the information that's out there kinda points to guilt. Ray Rice Another person that she controversially defended was NFL player Ray Rice in 2014. Rice was a topic of discussion on The View after his wife claimed that he hit her. Whoopi decided to defend Rice's actions after she learned that his wife hit Rice first. Whoopi said, quote, If you make the choice as a woman who is four foot three and you decide to hit a guy who is six foot tall and you're the last thing he wants to deal with that day and he hits you back, you cannot be surprised. Adding, quote, I know I'm going to catch a lot of hell, but I don't care. You have to teach women, do not live with this idea that men have this chivalry thing still with them. Don't assume that's still in place. Goldberg had similar thoughts after Solange was seen hitting Jay Z in an elevator. Whoopi believed that Jay Z would not have gotten any flack if he had decided to retaliate, saying, quote, I think Solange. Solange was quite ready for him to do whatever he was going to do. This is the thing, if anybody hits you, you have the right. I know that many people are raised in a different way, but if a woman hits you, to me, you have the right to hit her back. Goldberg added that if I slap a man, he has every right to slap me back. Of course, these statements were widely condemned, with many believing that a man should never put hands on a woman, regardless of the circumstances. And finally, Whoopi herself. Now that Whoopi is in a scandal dealing with anti-Semitism, people have been looking into her past and many are concerned about the origins of her stage name. If you didn't already know, Whoopi Goldberg is not her real name. It's actually Karen Elaine Johnson. We know the name Whoopi came because she's known for her flatulence. Videos of Goldberg passing gas are all over YouTube, so it's not surprising to find out that her first name is an homage to the Whoopi cushion. When speaking about her name, she told NBC News that she was lucky she had gotten the name Whoopi versus Stinky since she's known for the sound and not the smell. However, the second part of her stage name is where the controversy starts. Whoopi chose the last name Goldberg because she wanted to sound more Jewish. Her and her mother believed that having a Jewish last name would help her to get roles, which gives into the dangerous stereotypes that Jewish people control the media, which is far from the truth and is the cause of a lot of anti-Jewish rhetoric. During an interview with Vulture, Whoopi said, quote, So you have people who say, well, why is your name Whoopi Goldberg? You just want to be a white woman? It's like, no, I've been black the whole time. Goldberg has said that she has some Jewish ancestry and that she took her surname from a faraway relative. However, she did admit that her mother preferred the name Goldberg to Johnson when she wanted to get into Hollywood. Goldberg's mother reportedly thought her middle name Johnson wasn't, quote, Jewish enough for her to succeed in Hollywood. First up, Jay Moore. Jay Moore threw some serious shade Jennifer Aniston's way when he accused her of being mad that she had to play his love interest in a movie. Basically, she felt the casting could have gotten a more attractive person to act alongside her. It started in 2010 when Elle asked him what his most awkward interaction with a female celebrity was. He responded, not giving names, but describing a situation when an actress got very angry after learning that Moore was playing her love interest in a movie. Apparently, after she learned the news, she said, quote, you've got to be kidding me, right to his face. That interaction led Moore to, quote, go to my mom's house and cry. He was specifically asked if the woman he was talking about was Jennifer Aniston because she was his love interest in the 1997 film Picture Perfect. Moore said, quote, I will never, ever answer that. But shortly after, he did answer who he was talking about. While on his Moore Stories podcast, he confirmed it was Aniston after all. He claimed she went up to him, pointed at him, and yelled, quote, six guys they screen test, six. The one effing guy I hate, this is the guy they hired. Him. Apparently, this kind of berating went on for an entire day, and she kept trash talking him to other people, including their mutual co stars. In summary, he said that she was so mean to him, and it clearly left a huge impact. So much so that he will not stop bringing it up. In 2016, during a Sports Illustrated interview, he was asked what was more satisfying kissing Jen Aniston or firing Tom Cruise's character in Jerry Maguire. Moore answered, quote, Without question, firing Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is hotter. Probably not the answer that most people were expecting. John Mayer. 
Most of Jennifer Aniston's ex-boyfriends have nothing but good things to say about her. However, John Mayer took some not-so-subtle digs during an interview after their split. Mayer's 2010 interview with Playboy is pretty infamous in the celebrity world for being one of the shadiest ever, and revealing things he probably should have kept secret. Things including some shady digs toward Jen. In the interview, he accused Jen of being someone who is not good with technology, and even refuses to learn new ways to do things, saying, quote, If Jennifer Aniston knows how to use BitTorrent, I'll eat my effing shoe. While Mayer was getting into Twitter and other social media platforms, he claimed that Aniston was keeping herself away from technological advances. He added, quote, The brunt of her success came before TMZ and Twitter. I think she's still hoping it goes back to 1998. He even brought up their age difference. Aniston was older by eight years, saying, quote, I can't change the fact that I need to be 32. Joan Rivers The late comedian was not known to keep her opinions to herself, and she didn't hold back about her negative feelings toward Jennifer Aniston. In a 2011 interview, Rivers said about Aniston, quote, I would like to take Jennifer Aniston and put her hair over her effing face. I'm so bored with her and her stupid movies. They're all the same. I don't know how they get financed. Then when she was asked who she doesn't want to see on their Oscars red carpet, Rivers replied, Jennifer Aniston. Quote, I don't want to see Jennifer Aniston say, boo hoo hoo, Brad Pitt left me, get the F over it. In her book, Joan Rivers Confidential, Rivers made another savage comment about Jen. Quote, even if Jennifer does become pregnant, Angelina Jolie will get the baby. Kristen Stewart It's not clear if this is just a rumor or not, but gossip magazine The National Enquirer claimed they had good reason to believe that Kristen Stewart does not like Jennifer Aniston. Back in 2013, Kristen Stewart was allegedly annoyed that Aniston was getting a lot more press than her. The source who shared this claimed it was clear that Kristen was jealous of Jen. At the time, Stewart was struggling with confidence issues and could not understand why Aniston managed to, quote, hog the headlines every time with little effort. Stewart apparently also added that Aniston's feud with Angelina Jolie gave her a huge bump in the press and nobody would have cared about her otherwise. The source added that Kristen Stewart said, quote, if it wasn't for her bitter rivalry with Angelina, Jen would not be this famous these days at all. Again, take this one with a grain of salt, but I'm sure Stewart is not the only person with these feelings. Tim Gunn Tim Gunn is another person who does not hold back their feelings, and that was no exception in the case of Jennifer Aniston. After her 2008 split from John Mayer, Gunn felt she was completely desperate and would continue with her trope of playing the victim. At a launch party event, he said about Aniston, quote, Sometimes I think she has a desperate character written on her, adding, The clothes we wear send a message. I think that's the message. I don't think it's her intention, though. Clearly, Gunn thinks her perpetual victim card is all an act, and she's really just desperate for attention. Bill O'Reilly Aniston and Bill O'Reilly got into a strange feud after Aniston made some comments about children while promoting her 2010 movie, The Switch. For a summary on the movie, Aniston's character wants to have a child, and because she is single, she decides to get a sperm donor and has a child with that donor's help, clearly showing a new take on motherhood in the modern era. While promoting the film, she said that, quote, times have changed when it comes to the way that people think about family. Aniston added that single motherhood is quite beautiful because there are children that don't have homes that have a home and can be loved, and that's extremely important. She obviously wasn't intending to start a controversy with these comments, but she did anyways when Fox News host Bill O'Reilly trashed her comments on the O'Reilly factor. He said that her comments told young women that their children don't need fathers, which would be destructive to our society. Aniston, who doesn't usually comment on this stuff, decided to clap back, saying, quote, I never actually thought my name and that name would ever be in one sentence. She added that she only responded to the ridiculous comments because they insulted the women that are out there doing this on their own. Piers Morgan Piers Morgan shared his disdain for Jennifer Aniston after he felt that she was overly emotional during a Q&A segment. In 2016, she answered the question if she ever doubted herself by saying, quote, We're all human beings at the end of the day, while wiping tears from her eyes, voice quivering, adding, quote, Don't punish yourself if you feel that. Fans love the genuine moment, because it's a great feeling knowing that even celebrities have their fair share of bad times. But Piers did not take kindly to her vulnerability and felt it was completely fake. So the following week on Good Morning Britain, Morgan claimed that she was, quote, self-wallowing and needed to get a grip, adding, quote, Nobody forced Aniston to do her naked magazine shoots, then reminding her that her problems don't really matter because half of the world is starving. Then later in 2016, he also took the time to respond to an article that Aniston wrote trashing the media, where she shared how she was fed up with body shaming and scrutiny that she received. Morgan responded that she should dismount that high horse. In 2017, Aniston responded to that by saying, quote, You're always going to have the Piers Morgans of the world contradicting something that comes from the heart and saying you're a hypocrite. The Friends cast Even though the cast of Friends make it seem like they always got along perfectly, that was not always the case, and there was a point in time where the entire Friends cast hated Jen Aniston. When the show was really taking off, it was clear that fans and the media loved Jen's character the most, and she was getting the most press for everything, including her signature haircut. Her female co-stars got very jealous of all the attention, 
and that translated into real life feelings. Courtney Cox and Lisa Kudrow were described as quote, very jealous of Jen. The source added quote, everyone wanted to interview Jen and her Rachel's hair became such a phenomenon that was the only thing people talked about. They were supposed to be a team, but all anyone cared about was Jen and her stupid hair. It got very annoying. And it was not only the women in the group that had a problem with Jen. The men also were not fond of her either. The source continued quote, the boys gave her a hard time, claiming that Matthew Perry and Matt LeBlanc also made mean-spirited jokes at Jen's expense. They felt that she thought that she was better than they were. Thankfully for Aniston, the tension did not last long and the cast united together to negotiate salaries of $1 million per episode each. After they won the compensation battle, things simmered. Quote, they eventually realized the whole fame thing was out of their hands and they grew up and grew closer as a cast. And now the cast remain good friends to this day. It was even alleged that Matthew Perry and Aniston had a fling back in the day. At number five, Nick Jonas. Now, even though Nick is part of the Jonas Brothers, he did, in a way, warn their fans about the band. As you will probably recall, the band was together back in the 2000s when they were on the Disney Channel, but the band ended up breaking up back in 2013. At the time, a lot of fans were curious as to why they split. I mean, they were brothers after all, so what happened? Well, Nick ended up sharing some details about what happened, the drama and conflict included in their falling out, and warned fans about what things were like for them behind the scenes. In an interview with Wonderland Magazine, Nick shared that the pressures that were put on the band were causing the boys to become emotionally strained, and this started causing tension in the family. Elaborating on this, Nick told the magazine, quote, There was definitely a strain emotionally that was being put on all of us. We had such a specific way of doing things for so long, and I think as we got older, we tried to progress artistically. We got stuck in those old ways so our music suffered and our general vibe with each other and ability to communicate in a healthy way no longer existed. Nick was actually the one who pitched the idea that the band break up and this also caused some tension within the band, but Nick felt as though this was necessary in order to save their relationship as brothers. In a way, he warned fans about what life was really like for the brothers and how their careers had taken such a huge toll on their personal lives. No one really saw this breakup coming, but after this interview, it made so much more sense. Luckily for fans though, Nick was also the one who got the band back together so we could relive the good times from their career and also grow with them too. At number 4, Portugal the Man When the Jonas Brothers got back together, there was a lot of buzz from fans and in Hollywood. The Joe Bros had returned and they dropped a banger to make their comeback, a song called Sucker. Though it was a huge hit, the song also ended up causing a bit of a scandal because they were accused of stealing the song from another group, a band called Portugal the Man. The song that the Jonas Brothers were accused of stealing was the song Feel It Still by Portugal The Man, which side note is a very good song. Anyways, there is a mashup online of both Sucker and Feel It Still that shows just how similar they are and I have to say it's a little scary. Sucker just sounds like a sped up version of Feel It Still. When this scandal came out, fans on Twitter were talking about the song's similarities, accusing the Jonas Brothers of plagiarism and making memes about it. Though Portugal the Man came out and said that they weren't mad at the Joe Bros and that they had no problem with their song Sucker, this little scandal kind of warned fans about the brothers' content and how they create it. No one really knows if this whole thing was deliberate or just a coincidence, but it did sort of set a tone for the brothers' reunion, and starting off with a scandal certainly wasn't great. Before we carry on talking about the people who tried to expose the Jonas Brothers and reveal their true nature to their fans, why not take a moment to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and while you're at it, consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 3, Demi Lovato Demi Lovato and Nick Jonas were once very close. They had worked together while on the Disney Channel, Demi had dated Joe Jonas for a while, and they were just the best of friends. But all of a sudden, they sort of broke up, and this may have served as a warning to fans about the potential drama between Demi and Nick. The two of them had a pretty good friendship, so no one noticed when things became strained. There have been reports saying that they haven't spoken since 2017 because they had a falling out. In 2018, fans noticed that Nick and Demi had unfollowed each other on social media, but things really came to a head when it came time for Nick Jonas and Priyanka Chopra's wedding. Apparently, Demi wasn't invited to the wedding and this really affected them. When news started coming out about Nick and Priyanka's wedding, many fans just assumed that Demi wasn't attending the wedding because they weren't up to partying especially since at the time Demi had just been hospitalized, but it turns out that Demi just was not invited to begin with. Sources close to Demi said that they were devastated to not have been invited to Nick's wedding, saying that their heart was broken after that. We don't really know where the two of them stand anymore, and last we've heard, they just aren't speaking to each other anymore. Maybe one day we will see them rekindle their friendship, or perhaps they just aren't meant to be in each other's lives. This falling out could be a warning to fans about the Jonas Brothers, because something clearly had to have happened 
reason for this falling out to have occurred, so maybe there was some beef and toxicity that fans just weren't aware of. At number two, Taylor Swift and Gigi Hadid. Speaking of falling out, we have to talk about Joe Jonas's relationship drama and how this could have served as a warning about how Joe is in relationships. I mean, after learning about this drama with Taylor and Gigi Hadid, you can definitely see that Joe has grown a lot since this all unfolded, so this is more so a warning about how Joe used to be. Anyways, as some of you might recall, Joe Jonas and Taylor Swift dated for a hot minute back in the day, but things ended up getting a little messy and caused some drama between a handful of people. When Joe and Taylor dated, the breakup didn't really go well because Taylor was dumped over the phone in a call that lasted less than 30 seconds. Ouch. This ended up working pretty well for fans because as we all know, Taylor channels all of her feelings into her music and that breakup music always hits. Fast forward a few years to when Joe dated Gigi Hadid. This relationship happened just before she got with Zayn Malik and clearly things did not end well for Joe either. This time, Gigi was the one to break things off and Joe did not take it very well because he ended up writing a revenge song about it for his band DNCE. Joe's actions in his past relationships could have served as a warning about how he is in relationships and during breakups. The way he handled all of this could have sort of come across as cold, which doesn't really paint Joe as a very nice guy, but as I've said before, Joe has certainly grown since then, since he's now a husband and father. And finally, at number one, Frankie Jonas. Now last on our list, let's talk about the youngest Jonas brother, Frankie Jonas. Though he wasn't part of the band, he did have a minor amount of fame, but nowhere near the level of fame that his older brothers have. For years, Frankie was known to fans as the bonus Jonas, and and though it has a catchy name, Frankie never liked being called that. The fact that the band gave their brother this name and called him that so often could have served as a warning that the brothers might not be as nice as they seem. Frankie was often compared to his brothers as a kid, and since his brothers were so famous, people kind of bullied Frankie for not being as good or as talented as the other Jonas brothers. Frankie opened up about how the bonus Jonas moniker affected him growing up, saying that it took a toll on him. In an interview with Bustle, Frankie told sources, quote, it became a form of self-harm to look at these things. It became essentially an OCD, like a tick. I couldn't stop. I checked it every day, and I had to, to feel okay in a way. It became a serious issue for me. A lot of that perpetrated the idea that I was just this meme. I was this joke, and my entire identity to people was adjacent, which really affected myself and the way that I thought about the world and the way I thought about myself." End quote. Although his brother Joe has said that he refuses to call Frankie the bonus Jonas after learning about how this makes his little brother feel, they also never publicly defended their brother either. Frankie is now a star in his own right, having blown up on TikTok, but he did it without the help of his brothers. You would think that the band would have stood up for their brother more, and the fact that they let so much slide shows that maybe they just didn't care enough.